Hey guys, what is up? It's Jim here, and today I have quite the large sniper rifle for you guys. And I believe this gun has actually been a request before, but I also think that that was a pretty long time ago. So this is the LEGO DSR-1. So you guys are probably a bit more familiar with the DSR-50 that was in Call of Duty Black Ops 2, um, but I decided to make the DSR-1, uh, which fires a, a slightly smaller uh, round than the 50 BMG because uh, it is quite a bit bigger. Um, it would also make a bit of a bigger uh, rifle and I barely had enough pieces to make this rifle. So I'm super happy with the way this thing turned out uh, even though I do believe the receiver should be uh, 5 studs wide instead of being uh, 4 studs wide but we'll get a bit more into that uh, later. So let's just go over the gun starting at the stock with the butt blade here which is all rubber. Uh, it's supposed to be comfortable because it's used by uh, special operations. Um, so you can also adjust um, the butt plate here, I believe. <clears throat> this is for adjusting the, uh, and probably also deploying, the um, monopod. Which is to stabilize the sniper rifle in the back uh, with the grip. Uh, we have the cheek rest here, which I've used some sideways building techniques to get some nice shape here. Because I didn't really have the... 1x3 uh, inverted slopes, but it is a really comfortable uh, cheek rest and brings your eye right up to the scope. So on the other side we just have the open uh, space here and the bolt. So the bolt you can of course pull back, you just pull it up from its slit uh, or slot right in there and pull it back. <clears throat> so it goes back quite far uh, so you can of course load in the round. And uh, the bolt handle does look pretty good, and it's got some screw details here, uh, which I believe is for um, mounting the uh, cheek rest. So you can mount the cheek rest to this side, um, I think. <laughs> don't, uh, don't quote me on that. We've got the magazine in the back, which you may think, where's the magazine release? Well, the light gray details that I have on the sides here are pretty much the magazine release. They're kind of like clamps, so you clamp them. Um, together to pull it out so the uh, it has some lips that go in to um, some gaps inside here uh, so then when you put it in it then goes into them and then when you push this out um, it pushes it into the magazine and then you can pull it out so sadly there was no way for me to be able to make such a mechanism in Lego so I just had to uh, put some studs on top and um, that's how you load in the magazines Here's the grip, which is super comfortable. I am really happy with the way this uh, grip turned out. Uh, of course, it could be a bit um, more um, smooth in the back, you know, having the stud offset just like in the front. But the front is also super comfortable, and uh, it's not really too bad uh, back here. It is super comfortable, insanely smooth, and I love this grip to death. So I think I could actually go uh, sniping with this grip, and I wouldn't be able to complain. So we have some nice usage of some corner 2x2 um, two two inverted pieces on both sides of the grip which are just to bring some comfort and some really smooth looks and uh, I do think they did just that. So we also have the uh, screw details on the sides here, uh, three screws which I'm not really too sure what's supposed to be, it's probably just for field shipping um, but who knows. Of course we have the working trigger in the safety here, which is ambidextrous, so now you can see it is at um, safe with the white, now it's on fire, so you can of course pull the trigger, I don't have a working safety mechanism uh, inside here, because I couldn't really fit one since I wanted to have the screw details in here. Um, here's the spare magazine, which is probably like the whole key feature about this gun, is the fact that it has a spare magazine uh, that you can load up in the front here. And it also gives it the signature look of the DSR, because it wouldn't be a DSR without that magazine. So, you can of course um, reload it like that, you can pull out the mag in the back, take this mag in the front, put it in there, and then take your empty magazine and put it in here. Um, <clears throat> We have the receiver here, which as I said, this should definitely be 5 wide, because you can see uh, the magwell is the same uh, dimensions as the receiver, and that's not how it is on the real one. On the real one, it's about um, a 4 wide magwell, and then a uh, 5 wide receiver. 
Um, not a six wide because that would be way too big and this rifle is not nearly as big as you would think um, as you would think it is. So here we have the tube that I, or piece I believe that is for um, positioning the handguard. So you can put the handguard wherever uh, you want it to be. You can put it all the way back here, all the way in the front, or just in the middle here, which is where I have it. Um, just built from a reference picture, it was in the middle here. So I just put it there, um, even though I would probably want it in the back, but I just usually hold the gun right here, because it's nice and comfortable. Um, you can see the kind of barrel uh, heat shield kind of piece here. Uh, which was kind of hard to, to get to work because I didn't want it to be too long and I didn't want it to be too short and I wanted to have the right amount of holes here so we have six holes um, <clears throat> going through the middle here where you can see the barrel go through as well and there's of course a massive rail on top here and in the front we just have some Sloping details, which I believe are just to attach the different pieces together. And then, of course, the muzzle brake right there, which does look pretty cool. It's got the gas outlets on the sides, so it doesn't um, <clears throat> shoot it from every other direction and uh, cause some more recoil that you probably wouldn't want. So the other side is pretty much the same thing. Uh, the only difference really on this side is the fact that it has the bolt. And then of course we have the scope, which is uh, not very good looking because this gun took a ton of slopes. And by this I mean literally every single dark gray slope that I own. Um, because you can see them they're back here, all the way along here on each side. There's some on the grip, some on the trigger guard here, <clears throat> and all over this part and the front, and of course, some on the scope. But I actually ended up running out, and you can tell by that um, back part there of the scope. In the front, it also does look pretty goofy. Um, and I didn't have enough bracket pieces or plates to um, make it that way, so it just had to be like this. But it still does look um, pretty good as a scope. It's got its mounts, the screwing details for adjusting your crosshair which we have a little crosshair in there it's nothing much but it's it's just uh, for detail so the grip is falling apart <laughs> because it's very thin so <clears throat> sadly there will be there will be no file for this gun uh, but then again it is a really easy gun to make you just make a magwell here magwell here grip trigger you make an area for a bolt scope you know it's pretty simple to make and uh, <clears throat> yeah this was kind of a gun that I just wanted to make in real life so sadly no tutorial for this but I do have a lot of other tutorials that you guys will enjoy so um, yeah if you guys want to go check those out and download the files you can do that so that's pretty much it thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys goodbye